digitizing Delmarva's heritage and traditions. We're here today in Sharptown at the Sharptown Museum, and we have the president of the Sharptown Historical Commission, Donald Darby. Donald, you're going to tell us all about it. Now, you've, you've lived 200 years, so you, you know all this firsthand, right? Okay, I got it. I, got it. <laughs> um, I guess we can't talk about Sharptown without talking about that beautiful Nanticoke River out there. Let's go back to the early beginnings of this area. Who was here first? Well, we have uh, relics of the Indians. Uh, many people have dug up down here at the river, Indian arrowheads and other things related to the, the Indians. And that would be uh, the Nanticoke Indians that were in this area. And uh, there's always been a, a interest in finding out more about when they were here. And of course, we had the crew from the Shallop come up, you know, last year, and they uh, were very. That's interested. the reenactment of the John Smith. Of John Smith, yeah. Captain John course, Smith. Uh, they, they, uh, John Smith didn't stop here, as we know. He went on Lake Vienna and uh, uh, Phillips Landing, you know. Mm -hmm. So this, the, uh, just geographically, this is the high side. This is high ground in Sharptown, where Sharptown is built. And on the other side of the river, it's it's pretty much marshy, marshy yes, land. So obviously, county. this was the best place for the Indians and the best the place side, for right. for the settlers. Right. What's the uh, after the the knowledge of the Indians? What's the first uh, settlement that we know of have any indication of here in uh, Sharptown? I think there was uh, some settlement back in the 1700s. And then there was a man named Marine that came here in about 1818 and uh, got the things started, dry, dry goods stores began and things like that. And the uh, boat building, uh, that also is certainly connected with the river, the deep river, deep water ports here. Yeah. Well, the, the boat building industry started back in the uh, late 1800s and uh, into the 1900s. And uh, we had many boats that were built here that were very... Uh, very, very well built, and they went in the ocean, the P.T. White, the Annandale, the Cochise, and others like that. Now, these and were these wooden were, boats. These were wooden boats, and they were three and four mast, and they were huge boats. And the P.T. White, I understand the remnants of that, what's left is up there by the Francis Scott Key Bridge, buried down there oh. uh, after all those years. And, of course, around 1918, that uh, boat building kind of came to a halt, you know, as far as the big boats like this. And we did have a ferry that was running from Baltimore all the way down to Nanticoke, and that was uh, uh, stopped in 1932. And that was actually bringing uh, uh, wood up here for the Marvel Pack Company, and of course that burned in 1953, and there was no necessity for that after that. So we have the early Indians, then we have the settlers uh, way back in the 1700s. And uh, the shipbuilding industry, which was wooden boats, uh, and the power was sail. Yes, sail. And I understand the building we're in, they actually repaired sails up on the, had a sail loft on the second yeah, floor here. Yeah, yeah. This building here is about 100 years old or more, and they've had many things in here, but as we said, they did repair the sails up on the second floor. Hmm. They even had a kindergarten up there, and they had stores in here. As you can see, we have uh, uh, in the museum things related to a country store back in the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very interesting, uh, the town of Sharptown. Um, tell us about uh, the, the dry goods stores that said 1874, uh, they actually uh, incorporated the town. And then uh, early records show that there were dry goods stores here. There's about soon four thereafter. dry goods stores in here, yes. Uh -huh. And then I can remember talking with my wife about the number of grocery stores that were here. At one time, say around 1950, we had about, uh, oh gosh, five or six grocery stores in town. Hmm. I've got a sign up here on the wall, one of them, Robinson's uh, store. And there was a shower store, and there was a W.D. Cooper had a short store down here. And, of course, this, too, here was a grocery store. Now, everybody didn't work, and I guess a lot of the townspeople, excuse me, say it that way, worked in the shipbuilding. Where did, where, what other means of employment was there here? How about for the women? Well, there was a nice sewing factory here, and, and that would employ, say, oh, 50 to 75 or more ladies. Oh, you know? 
the sewing yeah. factory, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, did there, was there a canning factory here ever? Uh, I think it was down on the far end, uh, down by the water. Mm -hmm. I think we have a picture there of the uh, uh, steamboat there behind it, you know. And the, um, after the boat building time and when the commerce still continued, uh, then still the river was important because that's the way goods were shipped in mm -hmm. and produce and other things shipped out. You talked about the lumber coming in. What was the Marvel Packing Company? They made uh, baskets and things like that. Like bushel baskets yeah, and yeah, things? things like that, uh-huh. And that was next door to the post office and my uh, mother-in-law's and father-in-law's store, grocery store. So as a result, that was the end of their store. And we've got a picture there where the charring is on the uh, uh, front of the post office from that tremendous fire because it mm. burned it to the ground. It's 1953. And then Marvel Packing Company moved to Hebron? Well, it, yes, it operated there. There was one there as well as one here, so that continued oh, to operate. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. So to make a bushel basket, they would take uh, the, the raw lumber and, and what, would they shave it down into slats? Yeah, the shaving process, uh-huh. And then wire that together. Yes, uh -huh. And in one of the pictures after the fire, you can see that big machine. The building was completely destroyed, but the machine is still there. You can see it in one of the pictures here. Hmm. Well, I guess the, the produce, most of the farming back then was uh, truck farming produce. So bushel baskets was the way everything yeah. was shipped. Yes, it was. Huh. Yes. Well, I'll be. Now, you, there was a steamship, a picture of a steamship here that, uh, with uh, wagons pulled by horses and mules uh, waiting to load. Um, when, about what time was, when was that? Well, that would be bit well before the automobile, so it's probably around 1890, 95, something like that. I see. Yeah. The shipbuilding continued on into the early 1900s. I guess, was it the beginning of the steamboats and the other boats powered by other than by sail, you suppose, was the demise of the shipbuilding industry here? I think it was, yes. Uh -huh. As I said, the, the last steamboat run was here. It was 1923. The early, um, early Sharptown, uh, Mrs. Anita Darby tells us there were three distinct areas. What were those? What were those areas? Well, that's Robinson's Delight, Ireland's Eye, and the Royal Exchange. Is it? And it's interesting, uh, as far as history goes, our house had the name Royal Exchange on the deed. You don't know what the origin of those names were. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess Ireland's Eye. There must have been some Irish. Yes, so they yes. settled in here. We said Irish and English are uh, strong in this area. Irish, yes. and, Irish and English. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sharptown, Maryland. Well, you know, Sharptown is is known, has been known for decades for their firemen's carnival. When did the fire company start here in uh, Sharptown? Well, it started, I guess, before 1920, around 1926, and then. Uh, the carnival right here is 1936, and actually people that come to the carnival here today uh, may not realize that over on the other side of town, that's where the carnival really began. Oh. Not in the present day site. Well, there's, you have a picture here in the museum of a, of a camp meeting, a religious camp meeting. Uh, was that on the same site as the carnival ground is right, now? That's right. Uh huh. And uh, those little buildings were built so people would actually go in them, you know, and stay in them. They're small buildings, you know. And it's very interesting. Uh, the carnivals that have, uh, you know, those camp meetings, and they well, just would last, you know, like say maybe a week or two or something like that in the summer. And that's really all the building was used for the whole year. Like the carnival grounds now is three weeks out of the year, you know. So. Uh, a family would come to a camp meeting and uh, bring their food and everything else and, and camp there. I guess camp that's why it's in, called yes, a camp, camp meeting. Camp in, yeah. They would camp, camp right in. there right. and right. listen to sermons and everything yes, else yes, all week yes, long yes. and singing and that sort of yes, thing. Yes. And isn't, it must be, I know in Hebron it's true, the Hebron uh, Fireman's Carnival grounds used to be a camp meeting as well. Maybe yeah, that's uh, yeah. kind of a the way things evolved. Well, I might say this. Last year we went to the camp meeting on Smith Island. 
So they still have it there. Is that right? Did you right. spend stay overnight? No, we didn't stay overnight, but we did get some of the cake. It's just been the news. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I guess you got a little bit of seafood while you're over there, too. seafood there, yes. Yeah. Indeed, yes. So the Fireman's Carnival here has been going on at least since 1936. And that's the way the, uh, they, f they uh, fund their new engines and their right. equipment and all that kind right. of stuff. Um, and right now they're redoing the building where they serve those famous oyster sandwiches. That'll be an entirely new building, so to speak, uh -huh. enlarging it uh -huh. for this coming August. Now, how about the churches in, in Sharptown? Well, we have uh, two churches in Sharptown, both are Methodist churches and uh, the, uh, the Episcopal Church and the Presbyterian Church. And they had a different view back in the beginning of uh, things, so that's why we had two churches in town. And the Mount Vernon Church, which I attend, I say started over in Portsville area, a group of people getting together, you know, and then the church was built. So it came after the one here at Asbury. So the, the, when you hear United Method, Methodist ME, that's Methodist Episcopal, mm -hmm. and MP is Methodist Protestant, and the two churches here, which is MP and which is ME, not that it makes any difference anymore. Well, uh, your church was an M.E.? Uh, no, ours M.P. MP oh, okay. MP, ours was. All right. That's the Mount Vernon Church today. Uh-huh. Now, there was a time, now in present day, there is no Sharptown High School, but there was a time when there was a Sharptown High School. Yeah. What, are the, what are the dates of that? Uh, started in 1896 and uh, went on until 1937. And it's ironic that that building was just torn down just a little over a year ago, and uh, houses are being built on that spot right now oh, where that was. Is that right? Yeah. How many? What was that? Uh, were there four classrooms in that in that school building, or something like that? Weren't there? Mm, that's a good question. I'm not exactly sure how many there were. At uh, and then, but then they, the school board decided to consolidate and the high school kids from here go to Mardella? This is true, and then uh, later, the uh, uh, elementary school was closed, and the same thing happened there. They go to Mardella. Oh, I see, to Northwestern. And the, uh, the old elementary school is still standing uh, right now, and mm -hmm. it is not occupied. I see. Tell us about uh, Copes's Candy Company. Well, uh, Copes Candy Company, I guess he started more or less in his home, and then he was right here in this building. And uh, we have uh, some pictures that we looked at a while ago that were letterheads from 1950. So he was operating before that. Uh -huh. And uh, he operated more or less out of this building here. And he, uh, he sent, uh, had salesmen going around and sent these uh, candies and things everywhere. Uh -huh. It was quite a business. So he, he, he was a wholesaler and he supplied uh, stores, grocery stores, service stations, whoever sold he, candy right, and he did, he did. potato chips and that sort of he thing. He did, he did. Yeah. And we have a lot of memoirs in here from that operation. And what was Cope's real name? Colophius Bennett. Colophius. <laughs> I thought it was Cleophus. It was Cle <laughs> Cleophus Bennett. <Yeah>. What? <laughs> the first time I saw him, I was down in Nanticoke playing on the uh, softball team at Westside. And I was just a young 19-year-old kid. And they said, we're going to play Sharptown tomorrow night. They're coming over to play us. They got an old fellow out there in center field named Cope Bennett. Well, I said, my gosh, that night I first saw him, I said, that guy can still fly. Mm. He's in his 40s, I guess, then. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, he, of course, has served in the war here, and uh, we have memoirs of that from him, too. Well, let's talk about World War I, World War II. I'm sure there were many uh, young men from Sharptown in all of the wars, uh, but uh, it, are there any that stand out in, in your memory and that you have any artifacts from? Well, I, I was talking with you a while ago about the uh, picture that we have of uh, Bob Wheatley, he was the youngest uh, pilot to fly in that uh, World War II. We've got his uh, picture and story there. And then we've got things from uh, John Edward Gosley. And uh, we've got things from Cope Bennett. And there are so many that uh, uh, you could name. But, you know, I'm just naming the things that I have in here that I have things from, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But we had a long list of them. And uh, 
And over on the right there, I've got the picture of the helmets from the different countries from World War II and uh, other things, you know, because a lot of times kids come in here and they don't, you know, n remember all those things and, you know, I can talk to them about it. Not every uh, small town has a museum. How did this museum start? Well, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, we were talking, 11 years ago, actually, we were talking about uh, starting up a historical society again. So we got it started, and we were meeting in the old town hall, which is uh, still building, still there. And about five years ago, we were able to get this building here, mm -hmm. which this building is about 100 years old, and with the shelves left from the video store, it's ideal for mm -hmm. the things that we put in here. Like we have a country store back there in a the corner, and those things back there that were up on the shelves, you know, the little bottles of... Uh, even snuff and things like that, you know. Uh -huh. You can't put them on the floor, so we were able to uh, work with the owner here to uh, get a lease on the building and to open up a museum here. Mm -hmm. And you do this with the support of the town commissioners? Y yes, yes. Uh, and when we have our meetings, uh, we have a liaison comes and attends a meeting from the town, and uh, we send them minutes and, uh, you know, work with them and as to what's going on. Today, how would you describe Sharptown today? Well, today, as I look around, we just lost another uh, place where you get something to eat. So now there's only really about one place you can go in town and get something to eat. Uh, and then we've got a new trucking company that moved in here a couple of years ago that bought Donald Wheatley's Trucking. And then we have the uh, a pickle factory. And that pickle factory is still working, and its location today is down by Cherry Beach. And... Uh, I love pickles, but if you go down Cherry Beach, you may tell it's working because of the strong, you know what I mean, smell. I like the smell of I that. I do. I like uh, it. I, I guess it's dill, a lot of yeah, dill. dill. Dill pickle. They have uh, uh, five or six different kinds of uh, pickles they put up in jars. Looked like to me, going by there over the bridge, that they're replacing the old wooden vats. They have done a lot of that recently, yes. With some sort of, I guess they're plastic or yeah, something. Yes. Yeah. Won't rot as quickly. No. Well, of course, you, I would imagine they would rot with vinegar in them. <laughs> I don't think so. That's what it is. It is vinegar, it is. isn't it's it? It's strong vinegar, yeah. Yeah. Distilled. And as I say, I don't know how long the shift is a day, but most of the time when I go by, there seems to be activity around there. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of uh, production of pickles. Well, a company named Block and Guggenheimer, no wonder they market under B&G. That's why they call it Because nobody could... Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Eastern Shoreman can't <laughs> pronounce things like it's that. They're trying to spell it. That's yeah. even harder. Well, <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness Anita's here to tell us yeah, how to... Yeah. <laughs> so they, they, they make uh, all different kinds of pickles. Do they actually uh, put them up in jars here, or do they ship them somewhere else for that? Well, we, they're shipped and, and put in jars. But uh -huh. they, when you get them, there's a great assortment in a, in a little basket, you know, that uh, several kinds when you yeah. find the yeah. finished product. So we have the pickle factory here. We have the house moving business, yes. Jerry Matico. We have the stone quarry, which is uh, Diana Walker. Diana Walker. And... Um, what else here? What else? What other the, the enterprises? Uh, the trucking company down here. Uh, oh, that used to be Donald Wheatley. Used to be Donald Wheatley's trucking company. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And a new person owns that. Yes. Uh -huh. I noticed a lot of lot of trailers. Yeah, it's a large, trailers. A large uh, great deal. Yeah. 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 Uh, and other than that, the churches are still going fine. The schools are gone, as we said. And when I came here 34 years ago to marry Anita, there were about 600 people in Philbert all going in. There's still only about 600 people here today. Is that right? So it isn't growing a great deal in population. We are adding some new houses, as I said, that are being built in town. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we have the fine moving outfit there, Matico, you know. He's uh, down here at the end of this street. Mm -hmm. And other than that, uh, the people that are wanting to go somewhere to work, they're going to have to go into town and find a place to, you know, work. Mm -hmm. Well, historically, a lot of people from Sharptown worked for DuPont, I think, of, they did because of the proximity. Yes. How far are we from Seaford here? Oh, about 11 miles. Is that all? Yeah, uh -huh. So you can be in Seaford as yeah. quick, quickly or quicker than you can be in Salisbury. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. Huh. So it's basically a residential community. Right. And the life of this community is the fire company and the churches primarily, and uh, that's what keeps things going. I'm surprised it doesn't grow uh, faster than it is because everybody's looking for water 
uh, wa water is still the focal point, it seems to me, of this community. Well, we're about 20 miles from Salisbury, and uh, we don't have much traffic in here, you know, now. So I think that's had a lot to do with, uh, you know, Sharptown the way it is today. Well, if you're tra traveling from Sharptown, uh, from Salisbury to anywhere else, you go on Route 50 or Route 13, and Route 50 is, of course, uh, another eight or nine miles from here, I guess. Six uh, miles down. Down to Mardella. Mardella, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So unless unless you're coming to Sharptown or going across to uh, uh, into Dorchester County, perhaps to the Scout uh, Henson Scout uh, Preserve or places like that, you have no real reason to to come through Sharptown. Right, right. And another thing that's happened too, I didn't mention, we had some people that come from uh, across the bridge, and they'll buy a piece of property and they'll keep it here and then come down maybe a weekend like they want to come just for a little while. You know? Is that right? Yeah, and they get it reasonable, see, compared to prices across the bay. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have done that. We have a lot of people come in that uh, then they bring somebody in their family and say, that's a good idea, let's go down, let's do that too. So they've bought houses here, some of them, and uh, maybe they're going to retire in them someday or whatever, but they just got them, you know. Now, Sharptown is an incorporated town. Yeah. It has town commissioners. It has a water system. Yes, we have a water system, pay a water bill. Right. And how about your sewer? Sewer's in that too. Oh, so there is a sewer, sewage yes. disposal plant yes, as well. Yes, and that's down, uh, down not far from Cherry Beach. And also I want to mention that Cherry Beach, they're undergoing a great uh, change there. The grants are coming, you know, to redo that, so to speak. And that's where people come and uh, uh, they'll picnic down there and they'll also bring boats and put them out, you know, from there, the boat ramp and all. And that's... Uh, something the ball field down there that uh, people like to do is we get in the summer you know a family gave a grant of the land uh, for us and we for were cherry beach for cherry beach and uh, what we do there is uh is maintain it keep the grass cut and things like that and we have a grant that we just recently worked on so that we can enlarge cherry beach and make some important changes there and at the present time a lot of people come and use the beach for uh, they'll go swimming there. A mm -hmm. lot of these places like Trap Point, oh, you can't swim in today. Mm -hmm. But people last year going down there swimming, and then there was people come in there, bring their boats, and go in the boat ramp, you know. And then also there's a pavilion there, which picnic tables are there, and people can enjoy a picnic there. And then the ball field is right over there by it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go over there, and uh, kids play a little softball or something out on the field. You or soccer, or soccer whatever. Right there. Yeah. And it's... Uh, it's a very pleasant area, and uh, once in a while we'll have the boat races coming here from, uh, and that's something else too. When they have these power boats coming here for boat races. Now, who maintains uh, Cherry Beach today? Well, Is that the town? The town maintains it with the, uh, with the understanding as long as it's maintained, the family lets us have it for that. Mm -hmm. And something I didn't mention, we have a piece of land up here, uh, about a block up, which we were also given the opportunity to take if we maintain it and keep it up. So we have a sign up there, which you've got a sign that says Main Street Park. And that's we're working on through the Historical Commission under the mm -hmm, town. Mm -hmm. You have a, a relatively active Lions Club here, too. Haven't they contributed time and material and labor to Cherry Beach as well? Yes, yes, the Lions Club has. And uh, my gosh, we used to have Fourth of July celebrations down there that were out of this world. Mm. And... Uh, those things in the past, uh, you think about, you'd like to see again, you know. Yeah. So there's uh, there's also um, Masonic Lodge here in Sharptown, yes, I think. Yes, the Masonic Lodge, I guess here before last, had a very bad fire, and they're still trying to get the building straightened out after that. But there's been a Masonic Lodge here for oh, been decades long. and yes, decades. Yes, the fire happened, if I'm not mistaken, on their 100th anniversary. Oh. I think it was year before last, yes, it yeah. was a very bad yeah. fire, yeah. yes. Well, now that we're talking about the river, we've missed one thing, and that's the bridges. How do you get across the river? Tell us about the early Well, the, ferry. Early, the early thing we had, we had a picture over there about 1910 when they had this little ferry, which was for people, and they would go from one side of this to the other. Hmm. And then in 1917, the new bridge was built, and then we're talking about 1987, uh, the bridge, the final bridge was put up, and mm -hmm. you and I were attending that particular opening of that bridge. Now, that... That first bridge, that was a... Uh, steel uh, structure, yeah. It was steel, but it also was a pivot bridge that opened and let pivot, boats go yes, through. Yes. 
and the current bridge is built high enough so that boats can go under it. That's correct. Yeah, but it's still deep water here, isn't it? Yeah, yes, it is. The yes. Nanticoke River yes. is a deep water, and I guess the major shipping route for Seaford. Yeah, and of course it had to be for all these boats we talked about to go up and down here, you know. Sure. It had to be deep. Yeah. 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 Now, Donald Sharptown is located on the Nanticoke River, uh, and we're talking a little bit about the importance of that location. Kind of tell us, where is Sharptown located? Well, we're on the northwest corner of Wicomico County, and going back across the bridge, we go into Dorchester County, so behind our shoulder, that's only about uh, two miles from here. If we go in front of us the other way, heading toward Delmar, we only go about a mile or two, and we're already in the state of Delaware. Hmm. So if we want to go to Seaford going up the other road, we only go 11 miles, and we're there. That's, of course, a Delaware. And if we go to the right, we're heading toward uh, Mardella, our west side, and Mardella is only six miles down the road. So uh, the importance of shipping here uh, can't be too much said about it because the boats are able to go up and down the river here because of the deepness of the river and uh, going back and forth to Baltimore and like that. Mm -hmm. And we, we think back about the many things that were shipped in here during the old days when this place was really booming with the shipyard and things like that. Well, the, the, all the ships that were built here were built here because the, I guess you had uh, the availability of wood and you also had the deep port, deep river. Um, and and the lumber yard down here too, uh, just down here about a half a mile, which was a significant thing. Sure. And today we have a stone, uh, uh, we can buy stones here, you know, over there Diane has a stone quarry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's over near the, the dump in that area. Yeah. Well, the, the, the commerce on the river, in addition to, or in after the shipbuilding, um, what kind of boats came up here? Were they steamboats or? Well, the steamboat, as I said, stopped in 1923, but they were making daily runs. And I think that was a 24-hour trip up and back if you wanted to ride the steamboat. From here to here Baltimore? Baltimore, yeah. Well, I, I think. Of course, it kept on all the way down going toward Waterview, Nanticoke, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that steamboat would, I guess, would it, it, it did it stop here yeah. and then go on up to Seaford? Yeah, and keep on up, yeah. And we got pictures here of where it was carrying people as well as the cargo, both things, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, a lot, of, a lot of towns on the eastern shore, the eastern shore is surrounded by uh, water. Wicomico County has three rivers, and it's those towns on the river that seem to grow and thrive. Is that also is true of Sharptown, I guess. Well, as I say, the population hasn't grown that much since I've been here, but... Uh, that shipbuilding was a tremendous thing, and all the boats that were built here, uh, they did an awful lot of uh, carrying of things, you know. Well, now, the surrounding areas, I guess, were a lot of farms. W uh, did they get their did their supplies and ship things out by boat? They would. A lot would be shipped by boat, yes. Uh -huh. And then somewhere along the line, I guess in the 50s, uh, it switched over to truck shipping Trucking, by truck uh, and a yes, little yes. bit by rail before rail, that yes, yeah. yeah i see yeah. well and sharptown today is uh basically a residential community basically now yes yeah we had a a great uh, uh sports uh, thing going here uh several years ago i remember playing against the sharptown team as i mentioned a while ago when i was playing softball with west side and uh, they had a great <clears throat> baseball team here and, of course, we hear a lot about the Janosik store. Johnny Janosik actually played for the Eagle team. He was now, Sharptown Eagles, were that, what, that was baseball. What, what league was that? Uh, that was Central Shore League baseball, and that was an outstanding team. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've looked at the picture here just recently of the names. I can't name all the fellows that were on it. But uh, sports were booming then. And then we had the ball field down here, which is uh, down by Cherry Beach. And uh, we used to have someone up there in the announcer booth announcing the, you know, all this. And now it's mostly just used for uh, if the girls have a league or the little kids have a league, you know, they'll play out there. And it's done through Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. So it's not the booming uh, big softball and big baseball team of guys like we used to have. Well, they used to have an American Legion 
baseball team here because I played for that. Yes, that's true. And that was that was back in the uh, right. late fifties and and sixties, and Alex Smoot was the coach, right. and a fellow named Bill Collison was right. the manager, and um, Jeff Smoot played on it, and two of his brothers, and um, and of course I was from Federalsburg, so the American Legion drew people from all all towns all around. There were some boys from Laurel, Delaware played on that team. And uh, uh, so there is a base, baseball tradition here in it Sharptown. It is very much so. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, Mr. Smoot, Mr. Alex Smoot's father played in the major leagues uh, way back when. The, the women also had a great team. Uh, and then there was soccer here as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, today they we're working with more with the younger kids and having the, you know, playing through the recreation in parks. Recreation parks yeah. So there's softball and soccer. Uh, he played here. Yeah. Right. And there was also volleyball, a great girls volleyball team we had pictures of. And then there was some basketball. So we covered quite a few of the sports over the years. Now, where did they play basketball? I. Imagine it being the school, wouldn't it, Nita? It would have yes. to have been in the yeah. gymnasium. Gymnasium, at, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where is Phillips Landing, and what's there now? Phillips Landing is heading up the river that way. It's going up toward... Uh, toward Bethel? Bethel. It's in that Bethel area, yes. Mm -hmm. If you ride through Bethel, you can see a sign saying Phillips Landing, this road. Well, Bethel also had a history of shipbuilding, too, at one time, didn't it? Yes, they did, and... Uh, it's Isn't that a, interesting? It's that a town that's a, that's a town in Delaware, like I say, but it's a town that reminds me so much of ours here. As I go over there, I love to visit it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same same history and traditions as as Sharptown started because of its proximity to the the deep water of the Nanticoke yeah. River. You ask me why I got into this and why I like it so much. I've always had a passion for collecting, starting with antiques, toy trains, and toys. And I have some of those things here in the museum. And of course, as I said, my grandfather had a country store, and we have a section here which is country store. But my idea was to have a place where uh, children can come when they're off in the summer, you know, and they don't have to travel somewhere on the roads. They can come in here, and I've got things they can look at, the pictures, the books, and the exhibits, and things like that. And that people, they can come during the year and uh, reminisce about things like you and I, Phil, have been doing here today. Why is that important, Donald? Well, I, I think your, your heritage and things that were in your background, you can't pass them up and forget them. You need to, and then people will ask you questions, but what was it like here uh, when they had the shipyard or something like that? And we have one day a, a year here, which is usually in December, where you have an open house in the museum where people can come in, you know, and uh, visit with us and, uh, you know, look at the exhibits and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I would encourage people to come and give us a call during the year and not just wait till Christmas. Good. So you, you on, on request, you'll open up the yes, museum. Yes, we, we have our uh, sign out on the front uh, window there that says, if you'd like to uh, come in and see it, give me a call. Thank you, Donald. Thank for you, Phil. For telling us about this beautiful community. Thank you. And you, you are a fount of knowledge along with your wife, Anita, who tells you what to say and all that. <laughs> but we want we want to thank you for doing this and and for w what you do for Sharptown and for those young people who wouldn't know about this if it weren't for you all on the historic commission. So thank you, thank you, and thank you for being with us here on digitizing Delmarva's heritage and traditions. <laughs> <laughs>